Tesla is not one business. Tesla is a bunch of businesses lumped into one. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. This is not a live stream. This is a premiere. I will be in the chat, chitty chatting with you folks. If you uh, don't need to see that, then just continue. And there will be a three minute section at the end where I will hang out and answer more questions in the chat. Big thanks to my Patreons, as always, who keep me going and get extra content. You know the drill. Otherwise, subscribe, follow me at 4K Podcast, smack the thummy thing in either direction. Let's get started. So there's this fantastic user on Twitter named Nitzo, and he's a French investor, a retail investor, and he follows Tesla more obsessively, I think, than anyone who is not me. Certainly anyone who's not on YouTube. So I asked his permission to use this chart. He said, yes, we've talked a number of times. He's a really great follow. And by the way, uh, just today, uh, Twilon, uh, <laughs> Twilon, and by the way, just today, Elon uh, commented on this very tweet. So it's back in our faces. Let's talk about it. What is Tesla, if not a bunch of different startups? Cars, trucks, semis? I mean, yeah, you know that. So let's look at the biggest dog in the, in the, in the hunt here. Toyota, uh, you know, seven to eight, nine million units a year. That's fantastic. And as a result, they're worth 283 billion dollars. 283, why that's a lot less than Tesla. Yes, it is. But here's the question, this seven, eight million you're looking at, what do you think Tesla's gonna be at in three years, four? In just a few years, they're gonna be at five million, without a doubt, from the factories that are either open or opening right now. And efficiency keeps scaling, uh, production keeps growing. They're going to be nipping at the big dog's heels in a couple years. If you're looking at a 10 year horizon, Tesla's hoping to do 20 million. If that's the case, they'll be twice the size of Toyota. They will not be at a valuation a worth of 283, but double that, 600-ish. Well, that's still short of where we are. And yes, of course it is. Uh, Tesla has enough cash on hand to keep building factories. Just with the cash on hand, they could build enough factories to get them to 20 million. To say nothing of the fact that their free cash flow, they could build a factory or two just out of that without touching the money in the bank. Financially, they're in a very good position. The other guys struggle to get 10% margin on their cars while Tesla's getting 20, 25, 30? It's a very different company and needs to be considered in that light. So then we're gonna talk about semis. Valuing a semi company is a little harder because most of them are owned by much larger companies as small divisions. So like uh, Peterbilt is owned by Packard and I think Kenworth is too. The idea is, uh, so what do we do? We look at the only one we can find, Nikola, market cap of three billion. I don't know, I think it's getting I think the stock is getting to the point where it might actually be worth that. I'm still not confident I would invest, but maybe I would actually consider it. I'd consider it before I'd consider Lucid, that's for sure. Uh, although I'm not sure I'd consider either. Well, uh, well, that's a separate topic for a separate video. Although I imagine I've got a uh, probably JJ in the chat asking me what I'm doing right now. So getting past cars, trucks, and semis, Powertrain? Yeah, they develop their own powertrain, but that's not unusual for a company like Tesla. For a company in the automotive business, all, most of these guys develop their own powertrains. Making their own seats? Well, yes, you could spin that off as its own company, I guess, but what would the valuation be? 10 million? 20? A rounding error. It's a competitive advantage over the legacy guys, but it's not huge, huge. But then we get to the service and the used car market, the dealer network that they're replacing. So what does the dealer bring to the table? Um, well, they pick up your inventory in a consistent manner. That's good, I guess. But really they're an expensive middleman and kind of a hassle and often a drain on your brand. So by eliminating them, Tesla gets to keep the money in-house. Any markup they would have taken, they get to keep in-house. They also get the control. So when things go badly, it's their fault and they can fix it. And if things go good, it's, it's theirs to celebrate. And what you do get, for the most part, is a more consistent buying experience. 
So let's look at someone like Carvana. They're huge. They have locations all across the country and a market cap of $27 billion. Now, maybe not today, but definitely within the next few years, I believe the Tesla distribution network will be worth more than Carvana. And especially in 10 years, when Tesla's moving more units than Carvana, I believe they will be worth significantly more, and that's $27 billion. If they were to spin off a division of just the dealerships and service centers, the sales and service centers, would you buy it? You know it's going to grow. You know it's only going to grow. Would you buy it? Maybe. What else have we got? Infotainment and the car operating system. It's nice to have that done in-house. Um, there are companies that specialize in that, some of them quite valuable. Uh, then you've got your FSD chip, your Dojo chip, Dojo in general. So designing your own chips is really hard. It's really hard. Uh, so when it came time to design their own chips, they were told, you can't do that. It's impossible. There are only a couple companies in the world that design their own chips, and they are very specialized with very specialized staff of engineers and scientists and what have you. Uh, but they did it. They poached some amazing talent and they've made some amazing products. They recruited the best and brightest from all over the world and it has worked. So what do you got? Are they like Intel, which is worth 200 billion? I'd argue not because Intel is a massive retail operation. Are they like Nvidia worth 594 billion? I would argue still no. Now, while they may have the same talent, they may have even better products, they don't have retail products yet. There's no reason Tesla couldn't pivot into providing chips for other companies. They couldn't necessarily uh, license, uh, you know, FSD to others. They could license anything. They could, they, they plan on renting out Dojo. That's a massive service. There's a lot they can do with their chip division, with their chip design division. And that will happen. The question is when. Once FSD is solved, do those chip designers have as much urgency to make something else? Maybe they go into video cards. Maybe they go into Dojo 2.0. Uh, I assume they're working on that now already, but you get the idea. There's a lot out there that they could do, and they have the talent to do it. There's good money in making chips. Maybe they'll make the next universal microcontroller. That would be worth, you know, a, a buck of markup per unit times just the number of cars in the world times six, because that's probably how many you need. I mean, right there, you're talking billions. So getting back to that, we've got the whole autopilot FSD thing. Now, until that's cracked, it's still difficult. It's hard to value a company that has a product that isn't done. Waymo, many years ago, said theirs would be done well before now, like probably 2018 or 19. And it's kind of done in kind of a couple places. Uh, Ford Blues Cruise is uh, doing their little thing. Mail. Uh, and they, you know, are, are trying. That's Mobileye. So let's look at some valuations there. Waymo is valued at just over $30 billion. Interesting. I would have guessed more. I think it would have been worth $30 billion five or six years ago with the hopes that it'd be worth a trillion by now. But we're just not there. There are practical limitations that they're struggling with. You look at Mobileye, $50 billion. Well, that, that's weird to me. But they have more retail presence. They're already selling to Ford and others in a way that may work out. Um, now that they've got Intel, they're wholly owned by Intel, they've got very deep pockets, and they can approach things in more aggressive ways than they could before. So automation is big. Now, then we get to things like uh, insurance. Now, I made a whole video on insurance, didn't I? I think I did. I think I did. Tesla is small, but growing fast. They have better data. They have better margins. They have better kind of everything. And because they own the car, they manage to gamify safety. When you gamify safety, it incentivizes all the people to drive more safely, which lowers the rates and everybody wins well, except maybe not the competition. So you look at someone like Progressive, they've got a market cap of $63 billion. That's respectable. That's great. There's no reason Tesla couldn't get to 
Tesla Insurance, as its own company, couldn't exceed $63 billion in a matter of years as it continues rolling out nationwide. It appears to be a very good product. Remains to be seen how profitable it will be, but the bottom line is Tesla doesn't go into it if they don't believe they can crush it. Not just do a little better, but do all the better. Do all the way, all the way better, all the time. So then you look at something like an app store. Is there value there? Mm, yes. You've got a captive market. You've got good data on who they are. You've got a walled garden, as it were. There's no reason that couldn't be a profit center, and it probably already is, or will be soon, um, but it's budding. It is small and budding. If it, was a, if it was its own company, would you invest in it? I mean, you would, at a price. The question is, what's the price? What's the valuation? If it was 20 million, would you buy into it? I think it'd be a lot higher than that. I think if it was valued at 20 million, one investor would come in and buy it all. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, but that is absolutely its own value proposition. Then we get to the robo taxi and autonomous semis. This is too big of a topic to even cover as part of a video. These are trillion dollar concepts. When FSD5 is cracked, it is a trillion dollar valuation unlock in addition to wherever they're at now. Robo taxis will change the world. FSD level five will change the world. And if Tesla is the first to market, they will absolutely dominate. We will see valuations like we've never seen before. We'll see revenues and profits like we've never seen before. And even if they're second or third to market, as long as they're not too far behind, they'll still be number one because there are millions of cars on the road already with all the hardware. And with a take rate of only something like 90%, uh, 10%, that leaves 90% total addressable market. So 90% of over a million, let's just say you've got a million, you got 12,000, that's 12 billion in revenue you unlock on day one. Yeah, 12 billion. In addressable market, okay, so let's say half that. You get six billion in extra revenue on day one. So then we've got some line items on here for like internal enterprise software. I mean, that's great. Um, it's the same software company. It's the same software team that develops everything for Tesla. They um, write the FSD. They, you know, uh, the FSD team is probably different, but they write the, you know, user interface for the uh, infotainment. They write the drivers for the microcontrollers, which is what allowed them to pivot to 19 different chips during the shortage to keep the factory open and cars coming out. They develop everything. They have their own, they write their own email system, their own inventory management. They write all of it. As its own separate company, uh, without a revenue plan, I would definitely not invest, but I think it is a competitive advantage as we've seen since they were the only company to really grow in 2021. Only Toyota saw positive growth and it was something like 0.3% versus Tesla growing 87% and others like Stellantis falling 43%, which is alarming. So then we get to the supercharger network. Is there money in it? I don't know. Blink stock is only, you know, the company's only worth about a billion. That's not great. EVgo, two billion. These are not big companies. I made a video quite a while ago now, maybe seven months, about why there's no money in charging. And it's difficult, it's low margin, it's high overhead, it's underutilized. Maybe that will improve in coming months, years, but it remains to be seen. But if there is value in it, there's more value in the supercharger network. There's better relationships, there's better deals, there's a better class of customer perhaps, I don't know. But they do and they're definitely tracking that. If superchargers were spun off into their own whole separate division, would you invest? And at what price, at what valuation? Would you give it 10 billion compared to only 2 billion for EVgo? Maybe, maybe. So then you've got the solar panels and tiles. Uh, I don't know if I'd invest in that. Um, if it was spun off into its own whole company, would you invest in it? I don't know what they'd call it. Maybe Solar City. Oh, right. Yeah, it is a division that's, in my opinion, lagging and uh, a bit neglected. 
They really do need to get that back on track. Maybe it'll happen soon. Maybe it'll happen never. I don't know. I'm hopeful, but as its own separate company, they've got great R&D, you know, within the company. If it was its own separate company, they've got great R&D. They've got interesting products. Um, their execution is lacking, but it is a whole own separate kind of thing. It is valuable by itself. The Powerwall. Oh, the Powerwall. They're high margin. They're high markup. They're good money, good profit. The only thing they're not is readily available. Let's get more of those in the hands of consumers. With the 4680s coming out, maybe this will free up some battery supply. Maybe they'll put 4680s in there. Maybe they'll switch to LFP. They got to get them out. They got to get them out because there's good money in them and there's a lot of people waiting to get them. As that picks up, that's going to be just a great profit center and very high margin. But the utility services, the mega packs, that's where the money is. Tesla already owns their own first utility mega pack. It's in Texas and it's, uh, it was built under the code name Gambit Energy Solutions. And it's fascinating. I made a video about, I call it uh, Tesla's $47 billion bet on energy. And the idea is it costs you hundred million to build it. You make that hundred million back in six months, maybe a year. And from there out, it's just your marginal cost of operation and maintenance, which is largely done remotely. And then of course you spend a, send a guy out once a month to spray the weeds. It's pretty straightforward. So if you look at companies like the largest utilities, we've got Duke Energy here worth 76, 78 billion. 78 billion. But the thing is their revenue is only um, like 9 billion a quarter. And their profit is only like uh, one billion a quarter. So it's not a huge markup. Their price to earnings ratio is only 26.84. So what would it take for Tesla to get there? So you got your 100 million investment, you get 100 million back. Let's say at a year you break even. Let's say instead of six months, it takes a year because you're not getting the cheeriest choices of the highest premium places to build. Great, you got average places. So each one would bring in 100 million you got something like 10% of that is cost. It's not 90% profit after the first year. That means you'd only need like 100 to match Duke Energy's uh, current uh, 26x multiple on price to earnings. That means you'd only need 400 of these mega packs owned by Tesla somewhere in the world at that kind of rate for it to be a trillion dollar division of the company. 400. Are there even 400 peaker plants in the world? Turns out there's more than a thousand of them just in the US today. If Tesla replaces all of them, they're in a two and a half trillion dollar company just from the energy division. So that's their next trillion dollar opportunity. So let's talk about AutoBidder real quick. AutoBidder is software that allows you to arbitrage with your own grid, with your local power grid. You can Take in a little extra juice when it's cheap, give it back when it's less cheap, make a, make a little bit of money. Well, let's say you can make a hundred bucks a month. Let's say auto bidder charges a 10% commission. That's 10 bucks, it's no big deal. But there's hundreds of millions of homes in the developed world. If you had even just 10 million houses, let's say a million houses with auto bidder, and let's say your commission is just 10 bucks. Well, that's 10 million a month. 10 million customers, 100 million a month, 1.2 billion a year. You have kind of no cost for that. You might have to adjust the scale system, uh, re retune the API for each little local market, but it'll work. It'll work. And then there's the billing. So it's fantastic. You can always just uh, deduct it from the payments they're making on the system if you want. The, the earnings, the profit margin is sky high because it's basically software. So with just that, <laughs> let's say you've got 10 million coming in a month, 120 million a year, price to earnings ratio of, again, let's say 26, just on 10 homes at just a price to earnings ratio of 26, you're, a three, you're at a $3 billion valuation. It's amazing and it's infinitely scalable. 
as long as you keep selling the power walls. But maybe you could use the software on other systems as well. Maybe uh, LG, with their power walls, wants to let you in, give you a cut for using better software and doing it more efficiently. The sky is the limit. Then there's the mining division. It hasn't really done anything yet, but it can in the future. And just like with the Boring Tunnel or Neuralink or St uh, SpaceX, anything Elon really does, he won't get into mining unless he can do it better. Unless there's some advantage he can find that the other guys have somehow missed in the thousands of years of human exploration of the ground. It's possible. It's very possible. But until we see it happen, it's not a thing. If Tesla Mining was its own company today, spun off, I would not buy it. I do not know what it is. So we've got the most exciting part, perhaps, battery cells. You may have heard of the 4680, the tablet's design, the uh, low graphite anodes and cathodes, whatever, the nickel-free formulas, all these things, the million-mile battery. It is a non-stop choo-choo train of innovation over at Tesla. So what are we talking about here? What kind of company would they be if they made their own batteries? Well, they're making 10 gigawatts, uh, gigawatt hours per year is their capacity at Cato Road. They're going to be around 100 gigawatt hours at Giga Berlin and at Giga Austin, Giga Texas. They're a big competitor and they're only getting bigger. Each new factory will definitely have its own battery production facility. I'm surprised Shanghai doesn't already. Maybe it does and we just haven't seen it. So you look at a company like CATL, they have a market cap of $209 billion. I would argue today, Tesla's battery division is probably not worth $209 billion. But in three years, in five, in ten, in ten years, it's probably a half trillion dollar company. Just the battery division in ten years. It could be its own trillion dollar division. If they begin today, they could start licensing 2170 designs to other companies. They'll probably be better than what they have, and Tesla's already moving on to the next thing. So I don't know where I was. I got very distracted there. But the idea is, Tesla batteries are going to be a huge. If it was its own division, I would buy it. Absolutely. Could they license the tech? Could they sell batteries? Could they provide to other applications and other, other companies? Absolutely. They are building production as fast as they can. It's scaling, and it's out of control. It's absolutely wonderful and it is a huge competitive advantage. The rest of this list is interesting, but I'm not going to get into it. It's a lot of stuff, but the, the factories are their own thing. It's, I wouldn't call it a separate company. Parts design like the Octavalve, that's just quality engineering, the kind of thing I would expect from a car company. The materials, um, which is kind of borrowed from the talents of SpaceX. The glass, RNA microfactories. Boy, that would be an exciting one, but that's kind of a moonshot investment in my view. Automation and robotics. Well, we covered the Tesla bot. I think it's kind of in there. And then in the speculative part, the distant future, the VTOLs and the HVAC, who knows? Maybe those will become a thing. So again, not a live stream. This is a, um, this is a premiere because I am out of town and the internet is very, very slow here. So, and I've got some hardware limitations, so I'm doing my best. So I'm gonna hang out in the chat for the next three minutes. And um, you guys get to watch me in the meantime. I'm gonna to cut to earlier when I had to pause because of my screaming neighbors in the next room. Big thanks to my Patreons who get all the early access, bonus material, good stuff, you know the drill. And uh, yeah, subscribe, like, Smack the thummy button if you made it this far. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. If you're watching this later, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your plain and brilliance in the comments below. And, yeah, if you're still here in the chat, I'm still here in the chat. Let's chat.
what the f are you doing? Pero un día lo pusieron así. Una cosa 